poison ivy, one of the most cussed and discussed plants in North America. If you want to start a heated discussion, just bring up the subjects of poison ivy identification or how and when it can make you itch. I have done several videos on poison ivy and when I go through and read the comments left on them, I quickly realize there is a ton of misunderstanding and misinformation out there surrounding this frequently encountered plant. Let's start with a misunderstanding about poison ivy that comes from its common name. If you have seen many of my videos, you know that I am not a fan of the common names. They can be misleading at times. Poison ivy is one of those misleading names. It implies that this plant grows as a vine, and it does, at least sometimes, but not always. Poison ivy can also grow as a herbaceous ground cover or as a small shrub that can be several feet tall. I have often seen people calling poison ivy growing as a shrub, poison oak, or poison sumac, which are actually two different species in the genus Toxicodendron. If you would like to see a video featuring poison oak or poison sumac, let me know down in the comments. Everyone has heard the saying, leaves a three, let it be, which isn't totally wrong, but it can be a bit misleading. First, poison ivy has compound leaves made up of three leaflets. So the leaves of three are really leaflets of three. Now that we have that bit of basic botany out of the way, the real problem with avoiding plants with leaflets of three is there are just a ton of them out in the woods. Like so many, you may never step foot in the woods if you think they are all poison ivy. Common plants like blackberries, hog peanut, young Virginia creeper, and box elder can all have leaves with three leaflets and resemble poison ivy. Once you learn what to look for, poison ivy becomes very easy to identify. If you need a refresher on how to ID poison ivy during various times of the year, I suggest checking out our poison ivy playlist, which I will link in the comments and description. We are going to talk a bit more about poison ivy leaves, mainly the belief that it can be identified solely by the shape of its leaflets. While poison ivy often has leaflets where the two lower leaflets have a thumb pointing away from the stem, and the center leaflet has two thumbs pointing outwards, just as often there are plants with leaflets that have no thumbs. In fact, poison ivy leaflets are highly variable and can have smooth margins or edges, tooth margins, and can even be lobed. Poison ivy is what scientists call phenotypically plastic. The way it looks and grows is incredibly variable. This makes using a single trait for identification a tough task. The entire plant must be looked at leaves, leaf arrangement, flowers, buds, and fruits. This is a good habit to get into with any plant, not just poison ivy. If you love learning about how to identify plants, even those that can make you itch like poison ivy, be sure to identify that like button. Let's shift gears a bit and talk about immunity to poison ivy. First, and I want to stress this, there is no medically proven way to become fully immune to poison ivy. With that out of the way, we can move on to individual differences in sensitivity to poison ivy. How individuals react to poison ivy varies greatly among people. Some are extremely sensitive and react to mild exposures, and others can romp through thickets of poison ivy for hours with zero rash forming reaction. It is estimated that around 85 to 90% of the population will react with a rash and the remaining percentage will have no reaction at all. While this invincibility to poison ivy appears to be an awesome superpower, it isn't necessarily something that will last forever. A person's sensitivity to poison ivy can change over time. You can be seemingly immune and then one day, surprise, you have a wonderful itching poison ivy rash. Repeated exposure seems to be a factor in affecting a person's response to poison ivy, so if you don't break out currently, don't push your luck by bare hand pulling poison ivy. I can attest to how a person's immunity to poison ivy can change over time from personal experience. For years, I did not react to it, and then I slid down a tree covered in poison ivy vines. Not by choice, it was fire pull the tree or fall, and I got a horrible rash all down my arms and the side of my face, which I needed steroids for. For several years after that, I was quite sensitive to poison ivy. I'm not that sensitive now, and when I do get a rash, it's pretty mild. If you are one of the lucky majority that is sensitive to poison ivy, a handy product to carry with you when out in the woods are Tech New Waterless Detox Wipes. These wipes are a handy way to remove the poison ivy oils from your skin before they can cause a rash. 
a handy thing to have when there isn't a source of running water. You can find a link to the Tech New Wipes, field guides, other books, equipment, and apps that we use here at Backyard Ecology on our recommendations page. I will put a link to it in the description. Another thing I often hear is you can't get a rash from poison ivy during the winter since it doesn't have leaves. Spoiler alert, don't think you can romp carefree in the winter woods if you are sensitive to poison ivy. All parts of the plant, the leaves, the stems, roots, flowers, berries, and buds contain the oil that causes the rash producing reaction. So if you are out in the winter woods and grab a nice furry poison ivy vine, there is a good chance you will develop a rash. Winter is a great time for people to get out in their yards and woods to do some habitat improvements. Just be sure of what you are pulling or cutting. Chainsawing through poison ivy is not a good idea. The reason pulling or cutting on poison ivy tends to result in a bad reaction to it is the oil that causes the allergic reaction in humans is actually inside the plant. The only way to encounter it is if the plant is bruised, broken, or cut. This oil, which is called urushiol, is not a defense mechanism to keep the plant from being eaten, which is another often heard misconception about poison ivy, but rather acts as a liquid band-aid that seals up damage to the plant. Humans, along with some other primates and guinea pigs, are the only critters that have a rash-causing allergic reaction to urushiol. The reason why poison ivy has a built-in liquid band-aid is a ton of critters find poison ivy quite tasty. Critters ranging from deer to livestock like goats seek out poison ivy as a forage. Songbirds and game birds eat the whitish berries, pollinators visit the flowers, and some insects feed on the leaves. You can learn all about how poison ivy is actually pretty great for wildlife and pollinators in this video, and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.